Here we go. Yes! 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 Here we go! Hello, this is MakerJ101, and I'm going to be building an internal combustion engine. Whether this is going to work or not, I don't have a clue. I did, however, attempt to build one about four years ago. I didn't actually document it. I don't even have a picture of it, but I do have the remnants of it here that I collected from the shop. And um, I'm just going to explain to you what I did to build that engine and some of the problems with it and some of the things that I'm going to do in my new engine. Um, this video won't actually be anything about building the new engine, though. Just what I did in this old en engine and some of the problems. And, uh, yeah, a, a brief explanation of how an internal combustion engine works. But you're going to have to go watch that video if you actually want to know. So this was actually the diagram I drew up of um, the engine about four years ago. This was actually when I first started my channel. I probably only had about ten videos up, so I didn't really have the hang of YouTube yet. You can actually see that this is my uh, scrap notebook here my projects notebook and it was on the third page here but this is actually my high voltage jewel thief which was like my third or no it's probably like my fifth or tenth video something like that so this one it it, it didn't work i built this um internal combustion engine and it didn't work it totally failed um i mean it partly worked so i, I didn't post a video of it because i didn't think it was worth it but um i kind of wish i would have at least taken a picture of it so that i would have the evidence but so this was the sketch of it that i drew so I, I didn't actually have like a spark plug like this. I had a spring like this. <clears throat> and basically my piston, when this piston would come down and hit the spring, it would create a spark. And it partway worked, actually. I had an, a little electric motor that was turning over the, um, that was rotating the crank. And when I would start putting in propane, which was what I was running off of, um, the current draw on the motor would go down by about 25% and the piston would get, or the cylinder would get hot, and the hot glue melted eventually. And you could hear it firing as well, a little bit. So, it did partly work, but not, not very well. So, so how, to, how did I, what did I design this with? Well, my piston was three-quarter inch copper pipe connector, and then my, or cylinder was three-quarter inch copper pipe connector. Piston was a piece of three-quarter inch copper pipe with um, JB Weld cast into it, and then, um, yeah, so that was my piston, which you can tell that the piston, if you guys know anything about engines, already you can see a big design flaw here on my part. Look at that compression ratio. I didn't really know anything about compression ratios at the time. I kind of looked at this engine, and I was like, oh, it looks like I need just a little bit of compression here. So so basically, yeah, so this was actually part of the the actual piston or cylinder this was my original cylinder but I cut it off part of it for another project and you can see my exhaust and inlet ports which are also way too small so that was my other problem I think so my main problem with the compression ratio and a good internal combustion engine I believe needs to have at least a 6 to 1 compression ratio um, often they'll go up to 10 to 1 and in high performance engines they'll go up to like 14 to 1 but um, this probably had like a 3 to 1 compression ratio, which is really awful. That's probably why it didn't work at all. Hence why the um, cork didn't even blow out of the end. I, I don't remember it actually popping out. So I had this cork in the end here of, of the pipe. And when the piston would uncover these holes and cover them back up, and it would go back and forth here, and yeah, it was, it was pretty simple. So... So basically, yeah, it had a really bad compression ratio, and I think that's why it didn't work. So, or it didn't work very well, at least. <laughs> I mean, it kind of almost worked, but not not nearly. So, my new one's gonna have much better compression ratio, and um, I'm actually doing a little bit of research on it this time. So, for example, my steam engine here, if you look at that, measure the compression ratio as an example. When it's um, at the end here of the stroke, the chamber is only or the piston is only about five millimeters away from the stop there at the end the head so five millimeters and at the maximum it is about 40 millimeters away so that would be a eight to one compression ratio now if this was a two-stroke engine though it would actually have to have the ports a little bit down further so the ports actually might be here so it would actually be more like a seven to one compression ratio 
but still, still not too bad. Um, so if that makes any sense. Um, what else? Um, I guess that's really, really the video here, and um, I guess I could show you some of the measurements I took on this engine just recently. So this one seems to have about a 10 to 1 ratio, which is more normal. <laughs> that's pretty good, actually. So I just measured kind of from the intake ports here, if I can get my calipers to work here. So if I measure from the intake ports to the end of the cylinder there, or where the cylinder ends, or it piston ends here, so right there, um, it's about 30 millimeters, and then I calculated the uh, area down there to be uh, probably about another like three millimeters. So it's about a 10 to 1 compression ratio. Um, another important thing is the port size. The port size should be approximately, well, the, the maximum width you can have is about 60% uh, of the diameter. If you have it any larger than 60% of the diameter of the piston, then the piston rings will actually bulge out of the um, exhaust and inlet ports and wear out very quickly. So and this one is actually, if you measure this, so we measure the diameter of our cylinder, that's 35 millimeters. And so 20 or 60 percent of 35 millimeters is about uh, 20 millimeters, I believe. And so 20 millimeters, that is actually perfect. That's that's just what it is. So so that actually works. Now this engine here this is a weed whacker engine, has four inlet ports that would connect to the crankcase. So when the piston um, comes back, it uncovers those ports and lets the gases, the new air, gas air mixture, to flow into the engine. And it's got four of them, which they're each about, um, what did I measure them to be? About five millimeters? Yeah, about five millimeters. So we have five, 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 and five, so it's about 10, or 20, 20 millimeters total, which is actually the width of the exhaust as well. So pretty interesting there. And these are, I believe they're like that so that when, so that actually kind of swirls the gases around in there and displaces all of the um, burnt gases. So all the exhaust gases and pushes them out of the, out of the engine. So, and it would also decrease the uh, amount of wear on the having four of them would decrease the wear on the piston rings. So, I'm not sure why they didn't have two. I have seen engines where there's just like three holes instead of one large hole like that, which for the exhaust, which is this one just has a big exhaust, which is fine. It's just a cheap engine, I guess. So, that's my other problem with this one is if you measure this, that's only 3 3.5 millimeters in diameter. Whereas the piston, or the cylinder itself, is 20, 22. So if you take 22 and uh, it's a 22 times 0.6, if I don't drop my calculator, 13. So that should be 13 millimeters in, in w the width of the exhaust and inlet ports. So that's probably my other problem. I probably wasn't getting enough um, combustible gases into the piston or into the cylinder. So that's another big flaw with this engine that I built four years ago. So we're going to set that aside and uh, remember that we failed there, but that's okay because it was a big learning experience and um, it was a good attempt. So we're going to attempt to build another one and um, trying to decide currently whether I want to use this one inch pipe or this three quarter inch pipe. So, but I'm going to make a piston like this. I'll cast a little bit once a little longer and. Um, I haven't decided yet which I want to use, so I'll let you guys know in the next video. And I'm actually going to be using a real spark plug instead of like a homemade one. I was originally going to try and make a make a spark plug, but I decided that'd be kind of stupid, just because it would, at least for starters, because that's just going to add in more variables of things that aren't going to work, and um, that's not going to help me. So <laughs> I'm going to try and make it make it most increase the chances that this engine is going to work because I really want to make this engine without a machine shop. So that's, that's actually my goal is to make an internal combustion engine without a machine shop and uh, the most machining tools I have is a drill press so which I'll just use for drilling holes obviously but um so yeah that's that's my plan and my old engine so hope you enjoyed
about it, guys. Thanks for watching, and keep experimenting.